thank you so much for this uh, the other one? amazing opportunity to be here in the first place and also to be asking this question directly live with Dr. Zaka Knight, my role model, to, say, to start with. Well, I, I have been ruminating on this question for a very long time now. I've been studying Islam for over a year now, really deeply, both from the philosophical angle and also from the theological precepts, because uh, I have a background on that as a former seminarian in Hungary. Um, it was really a hackling one for me, but I think uh, some of your videos changed some of the ways I perceive both Christianity and Islam. And today I want to ask, I think, my final question, and that's the reason why I have to fly all the way to be able to see you and ask this question. How do we reconcile the idea that Jesus Christ has a divine nature and the idea that he is just a prophet. Because one, he was born without human intervention. And two, he somewhat uh, behaved as if he was, uh, he was a god. Somehow in the Bible, if you read all the part of the Bible, you will notice this sort of uh, divine kind of stuff, you know, recorded in the Bible. That just like you pointed out, the Bible has some very great doubts in them. Like, for example, in it, sorry, um, I personally recorded about 300 contradictions in the Bible alone. 300 contradictions from the Bible. And that was the first time I ever did so, courtesy of obviously your teachings. You know, so uh, I also read about the history of the Bible and discovered that for the first 300 years of Christianity, there was nothing like the Bible. And the Bible, as we have it today, is a compilation of over of 300 different books or letters written by different people. And the church decided to choose about uh, some, some books that's because of a Catholic. Uh, decided ex cathedra by Pope Damas II, the second, that this book today is the Bible. So those who died 300 years before that canonization of the scriptures never knew what the Bible was. And that is quite evident in places like Ethiopia, where they do not believe in the 77 books. So I wanted to address that particular part for me, reconcile how I could reconcile the acting of Jesus Christ as a God and his prophethood. Thank you. <clears throat> Brother Joseph, he had done a lot of research on Islam for the last for the last one year, and he gave a background about how we read about the Bible, mm -hmm. and how there was the compilation, and the Council of Niche. He's talking about the 325 uh, uh, C, but the basic question was that how do you reconcile the concept of Jesus Christ is the opponent that is divine and is a prophet at the same time? That means how can a person be God and man at the same time? As far as logically speaking, logically, first we come to logic and then we come to Jesus Christ is the opponent. Logically, they are two opposites. Can we have a tall short man? English wise, you can have a tall man, you can have a short man, you can have a medium man. You can have a tall short man. It is meaningless. You can have a fat thin man. Can you have a fat thin man? Either fat man, either thin man, either medium man. You can have fat thin. So the qualities of God and human beings are opposite. God is immortal. Human being is mortal. Can you have a person who is immortal and mortal at the same time? Immortal means no beginning, no end. So can you have a person who has no beginning and a beginning at the same time? Can you? Yes or no? No. no. Can you have a person who has ending and no ending at the same time? It is meaningless. It is meaningless. So God, man, a person having qualities of God and man is meaningless. Because God is immortal. Human being is mortal. God requires no sleep. Human being requires sleep and rest. 
God doesn't require to eat, human being requires to eat. So if you analyze anyone, any logical person will not agree God man. You can say godly man, yes. A man who follows the teaching of God, no problem. Godly man, possible. That means messenger of God. But God man, impossible. So anyone who says God man, a man having qualities of God, it's impossible. It's meaningless. And if someone says that Almighty God became a human being, even if you agree become a human being, can human being again become God? If he can, then you and I will become God, correct? So if you say God became human being, hypothetically agree with you for sake of argument, can the human being again become God? No. Possible. If he becomes completely human being, how can he become God? So there's something called as anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism means Almighty God becoming a human being. Anthropomorphism. So anthropomorphism Anthropomorphism is the philosophy that God became human being in some religion once, some twice, some twenty, some millions. In Hinduism, 330 million times. How many? 330 million times, 33 crores. They call avatar, which I killed for families. So number one, no, God can never, God will never become a human being. If he becomes a human being, he cannot become God again. So let logically, it's not possible at all. Is that clear? Okay. Now coming to your concept, how can we reconcile that the qualities of Jesus can be upon him? Some qualities are godly, some are like a human being. Let us analyze which qualities of God the Christians assume to be divine. And one you rightly said, that he was born without any bad intervention. So one of the reasons that Christians say that Jesus Christ is God is because he has no father. So the reply to this question is given in the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49. Allah says, In the Masala Isa, in the Laikam and Saladam, Halakam in Torah, Summa Kala Lakun Fayakun. That the similitude of Adam is same as that of Jesus. The similitude of Jesus is same like that of Adam. He was created from dust and said, Be and it was. That means if you say Jesus is God because he has no father, then according to the Bible, Adam, peace be upon him, and no mother and no father, he becomes the greater God. Correct? If you say a person has no father becomes God, then Adam, peace be upon him, and no mother and no father. The Quran says that, Bible says that. So that means you have to say Adam is a bigger God and the Christian will say no. Yeah. That means both were not God. These were miracles of God. And Quran says Kun Fayakun. Allah said be it is. So if Allah normally Allah creates human being with mother and father. But if he wants he can create without father. The example is Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He can create peace without mother, without father. Example is Adam, peace be upon him. Both of them are messengers of God. Messenger of God means Almighty God chooses a man amongst men and communicates with him on a higher level, which we call as prophets of God. Okay. I believe there's one God um, as a Catholic and as a Christian. So basically, I can believe that's true. That would have a single and do you believe Jesus is not God? Yes, I do believe now that Jesus is not God for very just good. one very simple reason. If you read throughout the Bible, you will discover a pattern in the Bible where Jesus is trying to shy away from believing that he's the Almighty God. We definitely point to the fact that he was telling us that I am not God, please don't call me God. Yes, very good. So to correct you, not Jesus is shying away. Jesus is very clear that there is no God. Shying away means he is actually God, but you know he wants to be humble. No, no, no. The right thing is Jesus never ever said he is God. Not my will, thy will be done. You have said, my will be done. So everywhere in the Bible he is very clear that it is the Christian missionaries and the church which manipulate and say, oh, he is very humble. God is the greatest, greatest. He has to be. Why? 
Why should you say? So what you have to understand that Jesus Christ was very unequivocal that he was not God. He was very unequivocal that he was not God, but he was a messenger of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. So everywhere in the Bible is very clear that but the church manipulates and tries to mislead the followers so that they get an ulterior benefit. So it's very clear that in my reading of the Bible, and if you read Bible with an open mind, that nowhere does Jesus Christ please be upon him claim divinity. But that does not mean that we disagree with Jesus Christ be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest of God. So Christians and Muslims are together. Only thing what we say, he never claimed divinity. 